Hey, Justin Dyson here with Dyson Apiaries. Uh, had a call uh, recently from another beekeeper who's having a problem with his bees. It's kind of a common question I get. One of his, he, he got a nuke in the spring and noticed that, well, he got two nukes and one of them built up nicely and is filling up the upper super and, and drawing out comb and the other one's just kind of sitting stagnant. They filled up the bottom super, not really moving beyond there. And um, so I asked him a couple questions about what's the brood pattern look like? Do we have eggs? Do we have larva? Do we have, you know, cap brood? Several questions like that. And it, and it seems from just talking to him that maybe it's missing that middle-aged brood. So he's got eggs, he's got um, cap brood, but it's kind of spotty too. So that kind of triggers me to think about a few things. And, and I just asked him, I said, let me just come over and take a look at them. So some of the things I was noticing as I was pulling up, um, I saw some other bees from a, a neighbor of his that, that had bees, so that's something I'm gonna keep in my mind. Um, everybody's heard about uh, varroa bombs and things like that. So um, another thing is I noticed some row crop fields. So I'm gonna think about pesticides a little bit, um, but you know, it won't necessarily be my primary concern, but we're gonna do a quick inspection today and try to figure out exactly what he's got going on with his bees. So stick around here with me. So getting started here, the first part of our inspection is going to be kind of comparing hives here. Um, this is the one in question. Of course, it only has one super on top, and he said they've not drawn it out. This was another nuke he got this spring. This one is already on its second super. Um, kind of come around a little here. Um, so it's, it's drew out the rest of its deep. It added a super and it also added another super. Um, I do see he's been using a high top feeder, which is great. Um, also an entrance feeder. I look at this one, he's using a, um, a Boardman type feeder. So I'd be curious to know how much he's been feeding these bees. Uh, if they're taking feed, sometimes that's a sign of some issues. If they're not taking feed quickly um, that can be some of your intestinal disorders and things like that so we're going to jump into this hive here in just a second and try to figure out what's going on with it so they're a little buzzy it's a sign sometimes of some unhappiness Just put those two frames, okay, to give them a little bit of wax. To, to kind work. of encourage them to come up. Yeah. B numbers for a spring nuke not too good, but we're gonna keep on digging here and see if we can figure out what's going on. But they're not in terrible shape. Still, definitely salvageable. Find out what's going on. Yeah, they're still feeding there, so you want to be careful. There's some honey here. Still covering their honey. Several hive beetles. So as long as they're not in the larva stage, we're okay. Definitely low on bee numbers here. pattern here is a little spotty. See that smoker sagging in a little buzzing. Make sure they don't get out of hand here. See the queen on the next frame actually. So. So when I'm sitting here looking, I'm looking for, you know, is the queen laying cells back? Do I see any bullet-shaped brood like 
like she's starting to spit drones as I say mm -hmm. um, I'm looking for where's the middle-aged larva I don't see any I don't see any middle-aged larva all I see is cat brood and honestly I don't even see any eggs right there there's her queen there's some eggs there's some really young larva really really young larva and eggs um, there's our yeah. queen there yeah. she's still a young queen there's a little bit of middle-aged larva there Looks like they've been losing a little bit of brood because it's a little bit spotty. If we look here, we see it's kind of spotty, and then we got to kind of analyze that and say, is that brood just hatching, or is that brood that died during the pupa or larva stage? So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncap one here. Okay. So that one's still white so that's a pretty young pupa there let's do one right over in here and that one's still white no purple eyes or anything like that so it's still a it's still a pretty young pupa so that tells me that there's a lot of brood here that died during the larva and pupa stage and they and they drug it back out um i see just a couple if we look really close here, see if you can get a shot of that. You see right there, you see that larva is dead. It's kind of kind of black. There's another one right there. There's, there's like three things come to mind when I start seeing brood dying in that stage. Um, you got your EFB, your European fowl brood. You have your parasitic mite syndromes. And then you have pesticides. Um, one of the things with parasitic mite syndrome that differs from European fowl brood. Hang on, let's look at this right here. You see this dead one right here? One of the things that differs is European fowl brood is always, always in the larva stage. Parasitic mite syndrome may be in the pupa stage or the larva stage so i'm looking at a couple more pupa right here to see that one right there has been uncapped and that was in the pupa stage Sometimes they'll die in both the pupa stage and the larva stage with um, parasites. Parasitic mite syndrome. It's a virus. Okay. Um, European fowl brood is larva stage only, whereas American fowl brood is pupa stage only. So that's uh -huh. how we tell the difference in those. We're we're not in terrible shape. I, I'm gonna show you one other thing it here. It looks but better than what I saw yesterday. So I'm leaning toward we got a parasitic mite syndrome issue going on here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a sugar shake test real quick and then after we shake these frames off I'm going to show you one other thing we can look at. So we always want to take bees from within the brood nest, close to the brood nest because that's where our mites reside. Um, we're going to be checking for the mites that are in the phoratic stage, they're going to be on the bees. Um, of course we can't see how many mites are in the in the pupa without you know freezing comb and stuff like that. So. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do a sugar shake test real quick. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna do a sugar shake test here. Um, we got bees in the brood nest here. We'll probably take a sample of a couple frames, and we're gonna take about a third of a, uh, about a third to half of a cup. It'll be about 300 bees, and we're gonna get them in this jar here. So we're gonna try to do. This. a 
lid on. Hold on for a second. I'm going to get one more frame here. This one's got some open brood on it, that's good. Let's see how many we got. We might have to do one more. It's probably good if we're going to get one more frame just for the heck out of it. Okay, let's see how many bees we have here. Yeah, that's that's good. That's a decent amount of bees. So we're gonna take this sugar. Sometimes it goes right down through there. Kind of depends on how moist it is. That'll do. So we're gonna put the lid on that. We're gonna make sure we don't turn this upside down, or you know the mites will fall out. So. We're just going to kind of roll this around and get the get all the bees in there nice and coated with the sugar. And this is a pretty effective mm -hmm. method. The most effective is doing an alcohol wash, but that's destructive. You know, you kill your bees when you do that. Um, so this is a pretty good sign of what you got going on. I'm just kind of rolling those around. Now I'm going to let this sit here. So I'm just going to set this up here and let it kind of heat up and the mites will detach from the bees. Alright, so we're going to finish up the sugar shake here. Um, we're going to get a little white frisbee here which works. I use a, a white five gallon bucket a lot of times, the lid of it. It works pretty well. And we're just going to shake through this screen. I'm going to get this bee out of here. And the mites should fall through the screen. and the uh, bees will stay inside so there's two three four yeah we definitely have a mite problem you see all those mites you see what you see these mites right here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so if we're, oh, look at them falling out. We uh, we definitely have a mite issue here. This year has been kind of rough for mites. I've noticed um, a lot of my own bees, the mite levels have been a lot higher than they are in years past. So uh, we're gonna make sure we get some treatments on these bees. And that kind of solidifies my case. Um, doing this inspection here, I'm seeing something that looks pretty similar to like a parasitic mite syndrome, the virus. Um, and now I'm seeing this high mite count load here. Kind of tells me we're on the right track. So that's good enough there. We see what we need to see. There's, I mean, there's 30 mites there at least. So in 300 bees, yes. That's uh, definitely above the threshold. So if we're in the fall, if we're above like you know, five mites per hundred bees, that's uh, that's where we need to start get taking action. See that one right there wiggling? Do you see the mites there? Oh yeah. See what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. So one of the other things we can look at here to kind of see what our mite mite load is, we can shake the bees off. And we can look in the tops of the cells, and it'll almost look like little bee eggs. But it's uh, what it is is the varroa defecation it will be on the tops of the cells, so it'll be up. So we can kind of take it where we can see up in our brood combs. And I really don't 
see anything there. Let's look at another one. I do see a little bit here, just a little bit of mite defecation, which is, it's not abnormal to see some. You just, you don't want to see, I'm looking at the wrong side there. Right there, some. Um, can you see that? See that little white speck in the top of that cell? So that's another thing we can look at to kind of give us a, a sign of how many mites we have. So we've, uh, we've, we've did an inspection on a hive. We see what appears to be like a parasitic mite syndrome. A couple things could have caused the, well, we did a sugar shake. We see that there's very high mite counts, way, way above the threshold. Um, Several things can cause that. One, you know, this seasonal brood rearing can, can cause them to be high. Sometimes there's, well, uh, you know, a, a mite bomb. You remember I mentioned earlier that on the way in, I saw another beekeeper with hives. So possibly these hives robbed out those hives at some point, maybe they died. And so that, that can cause that. Um, not treating like we should, not keeping up with it. So there's several things that can cause this. And now we're gonna address that on the back end. So my recommendations here are, we're going to go ahead and treat, and uh, he's got some Apovar here, which is a great fall treatment. Um, it's not restricted by heat. It's an effective treatment. So we're going to put Apovar in, and it's uh, two strips per, per brood box for 10 frames. So we have we have uh, two strips here, and you would put one of these per brood box of bees, and you want to put it in the brood, within the brood. Uh, you don't want to put it out on honey frames. Put it within the brood. Um, and also, my recommendation is going to be to go into one of these other hives and we're going to pull a few bees, bees and maybe some brood and we're going to give this hive a little bit of boost with some bees and healthy brood and maybe go ahead and give them a full super of drawn out comb because they're probably not going to be able to draw that comb out this time of the year. Here we are in you know, the last part of August. So we're going to give them a boost and I think we'll be all right. We'll get them under control. All right, so I hope that video was helpful kind of showing how to diagnose a problem mostly with bee numbers and, and brood being kind of off a little bit. Um, common problem in the fall, mite, mite loads are, are extremely high. We saw 30, 40 mites in a 300 bee sample, so that's at least 10, maybe more per 100 bees, and it's definitely above the three to five threshold. Um, so hope we hope we took care of that issue today, and we'll go back and check that again in a couple weeks and and get that get that addressed. But I hope you kind of saw how we, how we look at the brood and diagnose and, and determine whether or not it's a a mite issue, whether or not it's a European fowl brood or American fowl brood or or a queen issue or any number of things. So we're just trying to kind of dig in and show show how we're finding those things. So if you wouldn't mind, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button below and ding that subscribe button, ding that subscribe button. and buzz that like button. Bye guys. There Bye. We go. Thank you.